AMD have finally done it. Intel processors now look to be a little bit of a hard sell, and AMD is once again back on top. Not only are we talking about more cores or multi-threaded application performance, AMD is now the best at gaming. How did this happen? We've come such a long way in three years, and if what AMD is saying is true, we now have a processor that is best at gaming, but also runs cooler, more efficiently, and has more cores. And don't forget that if you build this whole ecosystem around a B550 motherboard, it would actually be cheaper than the Intel counterpart. This is crazy. In this video, we're gonna go through everything you need to know about the new Ryzen announcement. But first, meet the MSI GE66 Raider, perfect for both work and play. This epic gaming powerhouse has it all. Crazy fast Nvidia RTX graphics, Intel's 10th generation gaming processors, and a sky high screen refresh rate of 240 Hertz. This is insane. Style it your way with bespoke RGB lighting on both the keyboard and laptop body, and then play anywhere thanks to incredible portability and the maxed out 99.9 watt hour battery. Learn all about the MSI GE66 Raider with that link down below. Now, having a look at just the spec sheet alone, to be honest, you'd be forgiven for thinking that things look roughly the same. Each of the four newly announced processors has the same number of cores as before, and as they'd be using the same socket, they do quite literally look the same too. There has been a short bump to clock speeds with 0.2 GHz boost added across the board, but otherwise not really that much to shout about. But it's under the hood that things have changed drastically. And this is the bit that you lot are gonna care about clearly. The 5900X, which supersedes the 3900X, now actually beats Intel's 10900K in gaming performance. Mic drop leave. That, that's all we need to say. Not to mention as well that the 5900X will actually have two more cores than the 10900K. What a package. That's what she said. Not to me though, sadly. It's a bit like this channel really, it's just all around disappointment. Now before we all get too excited, well I suppose that's way too late for me but there's still time for you, we do of course need to remember that these are only AMD's numbers, that's all we've got to go off at the moment, but they are very enticing. There's no BS 4K benchmarks here, the 5900X is 28% faster at 1080p than the outgoing 3900XT in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a game that I only tested last week with an RTX 3090, which, sure enough, saw Intel's superior gaming performance make it the chip of choice, but not anymore it seems. While numbers like this should of course always be taken with a fair old wad of salt, there were a lot of games tested, and up against Intel's 10900K, the 5900X won in all games other than Battlefield 5, and again, this is at the very CPU demanding 1080p. The way that this has been achieved is pretty simple really, but I'm sure it's actually probably quite complex if you talk to the engineers, but they've actually increased the single core performance, or the IPC, instructions per clock. This is usually where Intel dominates, which is why their gaming performance has traditionally always been very good, but AMD seems to have not only matched it, but made it even better. Fantastic. You can think of IPC almost like taking your bags to the supermarket. The larger the bags you take, the more you can fit in. More instructions per clock. The more trips that you take to the supermarket per day, the higher the shopping clock speed. Yeah, that analogy just about works, I suppose. With a better die design, with lower latency and a larger shared cache, these new Horizon processors are just better than ever. They're also more power efficient, up 24%, and AMD claim 2.8 times more power efficiency than the 10900K, which in theory means a whole lot less heat, noise, and a smaller or cheaper CPU cooler. But this is definitely something to note because AMD are being a little bit cheeky here. You may recall that if you buy a Ryzen processor, normally you get one of these in the box, a little CPU cooler, but they've actually ditched this now on all but Ryzen 5s and below. So if you buy a Ryzen 7, you won't be getting one of these and you have to buy something separately. Which, don't get me wrong, I've always recommended get yourself something that costs around about £40, it'll be a lot quieter, have more thermal capacity. You know, it's not a big deal, AMD know this, but they probably are getting a little bit greedy here. Let's look at the full stack then, starting with a Ryzen 5 5600X, which will get you 6 cores, 12 threads, for $300. And this is the one that I'm not quite so sure about, as it is a whopping $100 more than a 3600, and whether the outright displayed gaming performance is going to be dramatically better in a budget build, 
I'm doubtful to be honest. Next up is the 5800X, which is 8 cores, 16 threads, and for $450, which is still a bit pricey to be honest. It has fairly similar specs to the i7-10700K for a slightly higher asking price, though of course you do get support for PCI Generation 4. The real win for AMD though has to come at the top of the stack, with the 5900X and the 5950X. 12 and 16 cores respectively, Intel beating performance, better power efficiency, and of course that PCI Generation 4 support. Both are still more expensive than the Intel list prices, but both actually do offer more cores, which I'd say does offset this. So I came away maybe a little bit bittersweet from the presentation, because on one hand the performance just looks to be absolutely ace. Like, I cannot wait to get testing these things and we'll be doing it on the channel, get subscribed of course to see builds, benchmarks, all of that good stuff. But at the lower end of things, a $50 price increase, across all of the CPUs by the way, $50, is definitely quite a lot. And while you might not notice that if you're spending $500, if you want to spend $250 but now you've got to spend $300, that's a fair old chunk out of your graphics card that you've got to take away, which is significant, and if that doesn't translate into better gaming performance, then it may not be worth buying. Now, of course, I hear you, there are obvious holes missing at the moment in the stack, and I'm sure the Ryzen 5 5600 and the Ryzen 7 5700 will fix these pricing issues, but it's not quite the slam dunk for AMD that some people expected. I'd wager that they're resting upon the fact that B550 motherboards are still a lot cheaper than Z490 Intel boards, so when you take this into account, a Ryzen system is still less expensive than an Intel one, it supports PCI Generation 4, memory and CPU overclocking, and actually has better performance, in theory. Newer motherboard chipsets will no doubt come in time, but in the meantime, you can always upgrade your existing 400 and 500 series motherboards with a BIOS update, and then just plop in a 5000 series CPU. My main takeaway is that AMD do look to be selling the very best high-end processors available right now, and they do have the capability of doing this in the mid-budget range as well. I guess only time will tell. Price versus performance is going to be the make or break for these, so make sure that you do get yourself subscribed to see the performance numbers and builds as soon as I can share them, but fundamentally, you do also have to remember that a CPU isn't necessarily the most important part of a gaming PC. If you're playing at 200, maybe even 360Hz at 1080p, then the CPU is going to make just such a big difference. But likewise, if you may be playing at 60Hz, 1440p, maybe 4K, then the difference is going to be less dramatic. And it's important that you actually know what's holding your system back. So if you haven't already, it's worth actually doing some monitoring, knowing whether you're CPU bound, GPU limited, and then you can work out what you need to upgrade to. As always, don't get sucked into the hype, keep a cool head, run a few benchmarks to find out what you're limited by. You might not be CPU limited at all. If you want a little bit of insight into a future build, then you can see some RTX 3080 and RTX 3090 builds that I've actually made on the channel very recently and it goes into things like CPU limitations so you can see what you need essentially. Hit the card at the top right corner of your screen to see this or you can actually find a parts list of this down below. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to check out MSI's epic GE66 Raider. If you're after a gaming laptop that does just about everything, with a ginormous 99.9 watt hour battery, then look no further. With up to GeForce RTX 2080 Super Graphics, Intel's latest 8 core gaming processors, and the super fast and super responsive 240Hz display, you'll never need a desktop again. Get the very best of PC gaming on the go with MSI's GE66 Raider. Check it out with that link down below. Thank you so much for watching though, I really appreciate it. If you have enjoyed this like button, if you have enjoyed this video, smashing that like button would be absolutely incredible. But I'd love to hear from you on this one. Are you going to be upgrading to our new Ryzen CPU? Do you think Intel is dead? Or do you think they've got something coming up their sleeve? Or is pricing just actually going to put these in a bit of a bad spot? We'd love to hear from you. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.